Hello everyone, it is Tiffany of Clarity, Confidence, Courage, Women's Empowerment. Today I am back to you with a video and today we're gonna to be talking about how to bring more tranquility and more peace into your life. I wanna give a shout out to my new online and in-person meetup group, CCC Divorced Women Heal and Thrive, because this is one of the discussions that we actually had in a group talking about peace, how to have more peace in your life, especially after going through a divorce. So if you want to join that group, I will put the link in the description. It's a brand new group, but it is growing like wildfire. This group specifically is for divorced women who want to understand better how to thrive and really have an epic, amazing life. And of course, I am with them almost every single week online, and I do plan to have more in-person events, but shout out to them because this is one of the topics that we actually discussed in that group. If you are a divorced woman or a separated woman and you want to learn more, I will put the link in the description. But in this video, I wanna expand on this concept of what it means to have peace and tranquility in your life and how to bring more peace and tranquility in your life. Now, as always, make sure you share, like, and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy the content. Now, let's jump into this discussion. Now, when it comes to this idea of tranquility, and I really love that word tranquility, because to me, tranquility is, is a much deeper space of being. You know, we know the word peace and what peaceful means, you know, a state of being at peace, but tranquility is to me a lot deeper. When I think of the word tranquility, I think of calm. I think of relaxed. I think of this feeling of finally calming down your nervous system. I think of this idea of even kill, like an even flow. You know, when I think about the word tranquil, to me, when I think of a tranquil person, it's like a person that they embody the feeling of peace so much that nothing can really disturb them. They don't allow their peace to be disturbed because they live their peace. You know, one thing that I think is interesting, I, I've, I've heard people say things, I just want so-and-so to be my peace. I want my wife to be my peace. I want my girlfriend to be my peace. I want my kids to be my peace. No one can be your peace if you are not a peaceful person. Peace is a state of being, and we attract what we are. If you're a chaotic person, you're gonna have a chaotic life, and you're gonna attract chaotic people. If you're a dramatic person, you're gonna have a dramatic life, and you're gonna attract dramatic people. But if you are a person that lives in peace, if peace and tranquility is part of your value system, and you embody it, guess what? That's the lifestyle that you're going to live. That's the lifestyle that you're going to have. That, that's the lifestyle that attracts peaceful people. I must admit, when I first got divorced, I was not at peace. And so I was attracting dramatic people. And I'm like, why am I still attracting dramatic people? I've gotten, I've gotten a divorce. Why am I still attracting these unpeaceful circumstances and situations? Why is there still chaos? And I had to learn it's because I am not at peace. I don't feel peaceful. I don't live in a peaceful environment. The circumstances of if my life was, was not peaceful, I had to become peace. And I want to discuss with you how to not just say you want peace or you want more tranquility, but how to embody and make it a state of being. The first thing, you have to make a decision that tranquility and peace is a part of your value system. I've talked about values on this channel before. And I've talked about this concept of your whole life is a reflection of your values, your belief systems, and your expectations. So when you think about your values, what do you value? What's important to you? And if peace and tranquility is not part of your value system, then that might be the reason you don't feel peace. So the first thing that you need to do when it comes to creating a peaceful life and embodying peace is you have to make a decision that peace will now be a part of your value system. When you know that peace becomes a part of your value system, I highly suggest that you write about it. What does that look like for you? What does that mean for you that peace is a part of your value system? What other things do you value in your life? What other things are part of your value system? And when peace becomes a part of your value system, what does that mean for the parts of your life that are not peaceful? And that leads me to the second step. 
When peace becomes a part of your values, that means you have to take a look at your life and make a decision about what is it in my life that isn't peaceful, that goes against my values, that goes against my values of tranquility and peace. Now you can have a lot of values, but if you live a life where peace and tranquility is a part of those value system, then anything that is against that must go. It's not even a question. Should it go? Should I keep it? Should I say? No, it must go. Remember, your values are one of the things that shape your entire life. Your life looks the way it does because of your value system. So if peace is a part of your value system, then the second thing that you need to be doing is looking at your life and making a decision, what goes against my value system? And if it goes against my value system, should it be in my life? And if the answer is no, or if it's not a hell yes, then it's a no. If you're hesitating, it's a no. If you start getting weird feelings in the pit of your stomach, it's a no. That's your intuition telling you <laughs> it's a no. You need to let it go, whatever it is. And I don't know what that is for you. Only you know what the thing is that is not bringing you peace. Now, if you say, well, Tiffany, this is my job, my career. That is the thing that is not bringing me peace. That is a get thing that's going against my value system. Then it might be time for you to make some decisions about whether or not you want to stay in your job or your career or how to start looking for a new job or building a new career or getting new skills. Now the decision is about what are you going to do to make your life more peaceful, to allow certain things to leave and to make sure that you're doing the things that you need to do to take care of yourself so that you can have more peace and more tranquility. So again, the first step is to make peace and tranquility a part of your value system. The second step is to look at your life and make a decision about anything that does not go with that value system that goes against that value system that isn't peaceful, that isn't you know in helping you to let it go, to release it. And it might be quickly, but it may take time. It may be certain people you have to slowly you know, let go or certain people you have to have conversations with or certain people that you have to just distance yourself from, but you have to make that decision. Now, the third step in having peace and tranquility and really embodying peace and tranquility, and again, this kind of goes along with step two, is creating firm boundaries. You all know how I feel about boundaries. You need to have hard core firm boundaries when it comes to your peace. Part of your value system when it comes to peace, I, there's a mantra that I personally have, and you should have a mantra too around peace. Anything that goes against my peace and my joy and my freedom cannot be a part of my life. That's part of my own personal mantra. What is your mantra around peace? Part of the reason of creating that mantra for myself was when I made a decision to make boundaries for my life. You can't understand how a peaceful life feels if you have no boundaries. If you just let things flow in and out, I always like to say like, I always think of Grand Central Station in New York where people are coming in and out, in and out, in and out. If your home is like Grand Central Station, if your life is like Grand Central Station where you just let things and people and events come in and out and there's no boundaries, there's no safety for you, there's no feeling of security for you, that's going to have to change. Now, if you have it, help, need help <laughs> understanding how to create firm boundaries, make sure you go to my website. The link is in the description below of my free gift. It's called Empower Boundaries. It is an e-guide that teaches you how to have boundaries in your life, how to verbalize your boundaries in different aspects of your life. It's completely free. You can get it on cccwomensempowerment.com. The link is in the description below. But you need to start creating boundaries. That is the physical action that it's going to take for you to start having more peace in your life. Now, the fourth thing when it comes to having more peace in your life is building a routine that makes you feel peaceful. So that might be meditation in the morning. That might be going for a walk in the park several times a week. That might be getting up every single day and just in the middle of the day, walking outside and getting sunlight to get that nice, fresh vitamin D into your system from the sun maybe for 10 or 15 minutes, getting some fresh air, stepping away from the computer if you work from home or if you're working in an office, allowing yourself to get outdoors. You know, having that 
actual feeling of peace on your physical body is important too, because remember, we are living in a physical, living, breathing organism that we call our body, and it needs upkeep. You know, so feeling peaceful also means getting your body in the, in the space of peace, exercising, again, going outside, taking deep breaths, calming down your nervous system, understanding how to get control over anxiety. Those are things that you can physically do to put your body in a physical state of peace. So that is the fourth way of embodying tranquility and peace is to give your body a sense of peace, allow your body to feel peace by understanding how to calm your body down, give it, you know, whether it's deep breathing, meditation, sunlight, exercise, movement, whatever that may be, but really centering yourself, stepping and aligning inside of your body and feeling what your body feels like and understanding what your body needs. And that takes you giving yourself the space and the time and a quiet space and a quiet time by yourself to dig deeper into yourself, to feel internally peaceful. Now, the fifth and final way to embody peace, to have more peace into your life is your physical environment. <laughs> now, you all have heard me say this before. I have tons of videos about cleaning up your environment, decluttering your environment, organizing your life. Uh, I believe I have a video and I'll put it right here about how to be more organized. But the bottom line is that your physical environment is also a reflection of your internal mental environment. If you live in a physical environment that is dirty, that is nasty, that is unclean, that is just, it's stuff everywhere, you are not gonna be a peaceful person. Studies have been shown to show how much a person's physical environment affects their behavior, affects their belief system. This is all psychology and research. You must be in an environment that makes you feel safe, that makes you feel secure, that makes you feel nurtured, that makes you feel like you're in a clean environment. When you're organized and you're clean, it makes you feel a sense of peace. So the fifth way is you have to make sure that your environment reflects that embodiment of peace. If your home is unclean and you need help, get a cleaner, get a maid service or a cleaning service. I think there's one, I forget the name of it, but it's like $19 for people to come and help you clean up your house. Get help. If you're a hoarder and you have some type of mental disorder and you know you can't do it alone, reach out for help. The bottom line is make sure that your environment reflects a sense of tranquility and a sense of peace. Now those are five ways that you can bring more peace into your life and really not just say you want peace or hope that other people can be peaceful, but really take control and embody what it means to be peaceful, what it means to be tranquil, and what it means to create the state of being a tranquil person so that you can attract more of that into your life. I hope you like this video. Happy New Year if you are watching this in the new year, and I hope 2024 is amazing for you. As always, make sure to share, like, and subscribe, and I'll be talking to you soon. Bye.